this morning almost afternoon we have this air conditioning on a 1987 mercedes 420 sel in very nice condition owned by a little old lady who probably barely drives at 200 miles in a year anymore even though the vehicle does have 125,000 miles on it i've done this vehicle in the past several years ago all the refrigerant is out of it i did condemn hoses on this and on these hoses where i picked up the leaks before the refrigerant is literally coming right through the rubber on the hoses but it leaves no oil trace but it's a substantial leak I, th I think it was like three years ago i did this and it's down to zero so this is a large capacity system we have a 126 chassis number 126 right here on the vin plate come over to your sticker there's a 107 chassis 124 102 123 126 so that's the 126 will be our refrigerant quantity quantity 1300 grams so this is a large capacity system and it lost it all in about a three year period of time. What I'm gonna show you today, and I'm not showing you the exact and whole procedure, but I'm gonna start weaning in maybe every month a little bit more about a one hose setup or a two hose setup and using a micron. I need to, I've had questions asked about a micron gauge. The micron gauge here on my blue vac Okay, that's one type of micron gauge. And as you see, I have one line, three quarter inch silicone hose going into the low side line. And then over here on the high side, I just have the micron gauge because I want to read what's on that side. So over here, I just turned this one off because I'm checking the system. I'm pulling down to, uh, it's steadily back out to about 1300 microns. This one was in a body shop. The lines were left open to the atmosphere. The PAG oil is saturated with moisture. So within an hour's period of time, I will not be able to get all the moisture out. This one is, will be considered moisture saturated uh, because the body shop left the lines open to the atmosphere. Coming back over here, we will start this one back up and let's see oh this is one thing I always do I've mentioned this maybe in one or two other videos I don't use the switches to turn pumps off and on I use the plugs because it's easier to change a plug and than it is to change the switch inside your vacuum pump your vacuum pump has points contacts that close and under high inductive motors Every time you do that, it arcs the contacts and that's what caused them to go out. If you close them once and never open them, it's metal to metal and it won't arc. So if you do your arc point here, you, you wear this out. Whoop you do, that's easy to change. So, let's get this. there we go, we're started. Now if we watch the micron gauge, oh, we're way up there right now but we're coming down 21,000 microns. Now, this Bluetooth to your computer, your laptop, or your um, tablet, if you have an Android tablet or if you have a um, Apple tablet, there's actually a software where you could graph over time and you can watch the vacuum fall. You can turn off the vacuum, you could watch the decay as the vacuum raises back up. And that's how you can tell when you have moisture in the system or a leak in your system. I have to do a dedicated video just on that. Uh, there are good videos about that by the manufacturer. If you look up this manufacturer's name, save me the time from having to do the video. Instead of me doing it, you can watch somebody else's who uh, sells or the producer of this company. Uh, but it's a whole video in itself, teaching somebody how to use this correctly for indicating how much moisture is still in the system, whether you're saturated with moisture. So, as you can see, we're just doing one hose. And what I'm doing is pulling it down off the low side, but I'm re reading the micron, the vacuum, on the high side from the furthest point. I'm very far away. It has to pull through everything else, the compressor, the evaporator, all the lines before it gets all the way over here to this point 
so that'll tell you the real vacuum inside the system compared then if I had a set of gauges out of here and I was reading the micron meter uh, micron level off the vacuum gauges that's way up here at the manifold connected to a hose directly to the vacuum pump that is not giving you a true reading because after that you have restrictions you have a small hole then you're going down usually you're not using a valve core remover as you can see right here I removed the valve cores have been removed from this system so it's a clean shot all the way through uh, one of the many uh, dye injectors I use I have several different kinds that's just one of and I will be filling this up since I could fill the systems up without running them I will be filling up the system through the high side port and it'll be a done deal uh, if I don't get too many phone calls and I keep having little text messages and uh, emails pop up on my screen while I'm trying to make a video it's very distracting uh, it's too hot today I don't think I'll be able to make the second video I'll see if I can if not uh, I'll have to move on and do it another day but right now I just wanted to kind of give you a hint say you are limited on funds and you only can afford a vacuum pump and a single hose this would be the setup uh, that hose is not cheap uh, but so if you did go this route now the other route is you have this T the T fits in the place of this and your second and as you can see I have three hoses would fit on the other side and it would go to the high side and you would be pulling vacuum at, at both sides now I could fill up refrigerant from here, I could fill up refrigerant from here because I have a shutoff valve right here. I could literally block off with a ball valve inside. Now this is blocked off. I could take this off without losing vacuum or pressure if it was filled with refrigerant. The same over here. I have a fill port over there. So if you're one of those guys and you don't know how to fill an entire system in one charge and you don't get evacuated right and you don't understand the gas laws the three gas laws if you understand the gas laws thoroughly in your head and you can make out without anybody telling you how you can entirely charge a system without running a car fully 100 percent complete every time only if you understand the physics of the gas laws and it's really simple it's bonehead simple once they're explained to you something my dad did to me when I was 12 years old he wouldn't let me char charge a car until I understood the gas principles and I had to show him with his tools how to charge a car with only theory out of a book complete without running the car and this was back in the late 70s so I don't even think it was the late 70s. Yeah, it was a, close to the late 70s. I think it was mid-70s. Uh, he made me charge a car without gauges and fill it up complete without turning it on. And this is something I'm putting out to whoever's watching this video. You will know when you've came to a next level and you understand the principles of the gas laws, the three gas laws, do some self-education. You should be able to evacuate with one hose fill with one hose never start the car and have it 100% completely filled and remove the hoses and be done and be able to walk away from a perfectly charged car that's when you know you've taken your knowledge to a, another level of understanding the gas loss so I think I'll kill this for now let's see where we got now on our microns we are at 6700 microns right now if I had a pair of manifold gauges on here like I have over there and this one went off but if I had a pair of man these pair of manifold gauge or the testo well no the testo only goes down to 500 microns they have a problem uh, it's something they need to correct so on this one I'm down to 1300 microns this one has a moisture problem um, if you were reading the vacuum here and say it said 1300 microns 
you might get that reading at the other end of your AC system inside the system here 67 so if I put on another let's see if I, have, I think I had to change the batteries in this one maybe I'll do that before I charge it let's see where the battery's at oh the battery's pretty good so I think I should do this for a show and tell test before I charge it show you what the vacuum is oh I can't get it in there I might not be able to get this one in there connected up to this line and uh, show you what the vacuum is at this point right off the hose compared to what the vacuum is at that point and you'll see why you should not and would not use a vacuum gauge if you had a port at your man, uh, vacuum pump you would not atta attach this anywhere down here you would not attach it if you had a port here you would not attach it if you had a port here because it would give you inaccurate well the vacuum pump is in operation now the way you combat that get around it when you think you got your vacuum down to 100 or 200 microns it'll raise you turn off your vacuum you isolated it now the vacuum pump is no longer pulling a vacuum but you would have your vacuum your micrometer in the micrometer your, your vacuum gauge your micrometer gauge you we're not doing measurements here um well we are but not physical um you'd hook it up to your port right there and this port is located on the other side of this shutoff so this is where you would take the vacuum and then you would watch the vacuum rise and level out so if you read while the vacuum pump was on say 500 microns here at the other side you might read 1800 microns so that's it for this video it's getting a little long and I got to get this other one charged and I got to get back on this and get off to my other jobs but that's just a teaser without all the information I left out a lot of information I don't have something set up I'm just showing you a little bit and that's all you get to see for now